I want to talk about the fallacy of the separation of church and state in the Constitution. It's a fallacy. It's a perversion. It's a lie used by those that don't like religion to try to have an arm to keep it out of the public square and specifically out of government. Um, my eyes were opened greatly when I was at Colonial Williamsburg and was going through the church, which was the Church of England, because that's the church that was enforced upon the colonists. And what I learned is that when they paid tithes and offerings to their church, the Church of England, it was actually um, a tax contribution. It went to, the, went to the king, went to the government of England. <coughs> and I saw the seat where uh, George Washington sat, and I think Thomas Jefferson, you know, they had reserved seats, very legalistic seeming um, kind of uh, church government or congregational government. And while standing in that church, my eyes were opened greatly. <coughs> I just hadn't given it much thought, but my eyes were opened greatly as to why the founders would put a clause in our governing document, our founding document, saying that Congress shall make no law establishing religion because they lived under an established religion. It was enforced upon them. They, <coughs> if they had religion, it had to be the Church of England. Um, pretty amazing. Pretty strong. I did not realize that, that that was the case. And um, there's probably some argument, argument against that because you had different colonies established for different religious purposes. For instance, I heard that Maryland was established primarily for Catholicism. So um not sure how all that works historically. I just remember what I learned there at Colonial Williamsburg. And my eyes were open to why the writers, the framers would write in their constitution, the government can't make a law making you have a certain religion. <coughs> now, that is absolutely accurate, and that's absolutely good. Uh, Jesus himself is that way. Jesus is not going to force himself on anybody. He's not. Um, but then those who use the, <coughs> quote, false doctrine of separation of church and state to try to keep us from expressing our re ourself religiously, spiritually, omit a huge chunk of the Second Amendment. Congress shall make no law establishing religion or limiting the free exercise thereof. You can't do either. You can't make me go to a certain church and you can't stop me from going to one I want to go to or having one in my home or having church with my wife or my kids. According to the Constitution of the United States, you can't do either. You also can't stop me from living out my beliefs wherever I am in the public square unless, unless that expression of my beliefs does harm to somebody. You can't stop me from living out my beliefs, beliefs in the public square, in my government position, wherever I am. You cannot. That's the law of the land. Anything else is a fallacy. It's a lie. It's a perversion. <laughs> but hey, what's new? I mean, you know, just look at the left and the deep state. So much perversion. So much calling good evil and calling evil good that Isaiah warns us about. So let's get it right. Let's let God's light of truth shine on it. Congress cannot, government cannot make you have a certain religion, but they can't stop you from exercising yours. Can't do it. That's the law of the land in the United States of America. And I thank God for it.